So that happened. Yeah, I passed an audition and for once I'm finally telling you guys because one, I thought it would be relevant to the timing right now. I mean, Mnet's Island 2 is finally coming out on April 18th and I applied just for fun, just for funsies after making my audition tutorial right here, which I believe was released on eight months ago. So that is like about July 16th, 2023 and I thought it would be fun to give it a try. So I applied and got an email back for their second round audition. Now, I didn't know if this was a scam or not, but let me guide you guys through the email that I received and why I kind of knew it was actually real and what was in this email. Now, technically, I'm probably not supposed to share this, but because I didn't actually end up going to the second round audition in itself, I'll tell you like the reasons why I suppose later on. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know what actually happens in second round auditions for a survival show. So unfortunately, I don't actually know when I applied for this audition exactly, but I assume it was near July 16th when I posted that video. Now, on August 5th, I get this email titled Island2. Hello, this is Mnet Island2 team. And it was from a Gmail account, islandapply at gmail.com. So I was like, hmm, this is a little suspicious. This is probably a scam because it's a Gmail account. That's like the first red flag you should notice, right? Because anyone can make a Gmail account. But if you have their actual domain, like at island2.com, then it would be a little bit more trustworthy. However, I recalled like from my actual audition video that the email that you're supposed to send your auditions to is this exact exact email. It said in my audition tutorial, I tried to find the Instagram post, but I think they deleted it, like, of the um, Island 2 audition, but anyway, it is actually this audition, so I knew it wasn't a scam from that, and I kept on writing, reading, writing, so it said, oh my god, okay, let's read together, so it says, hello, this is Mnet Island 2 team, thank you for participating in the online audition. The Island 2 audition is held online and on site, and we are contacting you with the information you'll need to attend to the in-person audition scheduled in your country. Please check whether the venue is located in a city where you can participate and read the following guideline thoroughly. Please reply by email to confirm your attendance. I don't know why the camera is acting weird. It's like completely dark behind. So this on-site audition was technically their version of a second round. Now they didn't really release this information before. As you can see in my audition tutorial video, they kind of just said audition online and you'll see from there pretty much. And so I was like, oh, this is interesting. I really would like to go to the second round, obviously, to show you guys, maybe show you guys the experience if I don't get too far. And yeah, for those applicants who reside in non-English speaking countries, it says, please write your name or nickname in English when you reply to this email for a better communication process, which is so, 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 so funny because I actually replied to them um, to this email and they left me on read. I don't know if they like read it, but they didn't respond back to me which I was very shocked by because you know it's Mnet maybe they thought oh if this girl isn't showing up then that's a lost cause whatever we don't have time to reply back to emails but what I basically said was hello thank you for your email where's the venue of this audition because you know that's a valid question they didn't include that in the email so I was like what the heck is going on and I just thought it was a little suspicious even though it's the actual Mnet contacted me. So it says, guidance for the second audition. So the venue of the audition, it said name of building. And then it said detailed address. I was like, what? They clearly like drafted this email and didn't edit it afterwards. So I was like very confused. So asking for the venue, I think was a very valid question. Now they did update me with this. So just keep watching, I guess. The date and time of the audition was August 12th, 11 p.m. Now, that's what, that was another error on their fault. So I was like, oh, 11 p.m. At that time, I didn't notice. But anyway, it said, please be sure to arrive at the audition site no later than 20 minutes prior to the audition time. Okay, what to prepare for the audition is common for all participants. So number one, a self-introduction in Korean within 20 seconds. So you actually had to speak in Korean, which definitely makes sense because, you know, it's a survival show that's going to be in Korea and spoken in Korean. So you had to show that off. So it kind of goes to show if you do have your self-introduction in Korean already in your first round, that would be good. But obviously, if you're not fluent, don't try to do it. But if you do know it, that would be very, very nice to include. So number two is vocal or rap. So it's one song, unaccompanied. So instrument playing is not allowed. For rap, be prepared for the part by which you can demonstrate your singing ability. So even if you choose rap, you basically do have to show your vocals just because rapping isn't like that heavy of a category is what people consider it to be, especially in a survival show that is not focused around rapping. 
And then I also said, number three, K-pop dance. One song, the sound source should be prepared in your personal smartphone. So you'd have to bring your own song. The smartphone is hand in hand is unique type. So if it's not Apple or Samsung, please take a separate jack with you that you can connect it to the speakers. Jack, I think is like a very Korean term, but they basically just mean like a cord. And then number four, one backup song. Please be prepared for a backup song in preparation of additional requests among vocal or dance. And unless there is a special request, it is not allowed to perform any individual skill or specialty other than the common preparations for the whole participants unless there. So um, their English is a little odd, but what they mean is you need to have a backup song that's either vocal or dance. And you can't have your backup song being like a ballet performance. You know what I mean? It can't be a special skill. You actually have to uh, do your vocals or dance. And fifth, it says be ready to share if you have a self-composed rap or song. And I'm pretty sure that's optional because I doubt they would ask everyone for a self-composed song or rap. And then now we move on to the documents to bring with you. So firstly is your ID card. Put, bring any one of your ID, passport, student ID, or a family relation certificate. So your identification is required. And then one letter of consent from your legal representative. If you're a minor, you shall submit on-site a letter of consent by his or her legal representative. So if you're not a minor, I'm pretty sure you can just ignore this. And then number three is one copy of the ID card of the legal representative. So if you're a minor, you must submit any document that can prove the person who has prepared the level of the letter of consent is the legal representative. And you also have to sign the pledge of confidentiality attached here to on the date of the second audition. Other guidance, makeup. Please avoid any makeup with deep shade of color on or around eyes and lips. So that makes sense. I mean, even for your first round audition, you shouldn't have any makeup on. And if you do, it should look like you don't have any makeup on. Your costume, please avoid any boxy clothes. So like baggy clothes, which are difficult to assess dance lines and wear costumes with bright colors if possible. Oh, okay. So that's really unique. I've never heard of that before. But they want you to wear bright colors. Okay, precautions. So, and this is the line that really actually scares me. So it says, if you have received this email, you are obliged not to make public or disclose any contents relating to this audition to any media, including but not limited to any SNS, internet, messenger, and TV, and any other person during the processing of this audition and broadcast from the time of such receipt. Please be advised that you may be subject to any personal advantage if you violate the above provision. But like, I didn't sign anything. I didn't consent to anything, so I, I think I'm good. All I ask is, um, I asked a question and they don't reply back. I'm like really salty about that. <laughs> so on the audition day, all of the contents of the audition will be filmed, which may be used subsequently in broadcasting. And then there will be a notice to final successful candidates in order of precedence within a month from the date of the global audition. And please understand that there won't be any separate notice to the failed candidates. So they only contact the individuals who passed the audition. And there's, uh, please note that there shouldn't be any problem in proceeding with the schedule related to the program after receiving the notice of final pass. So I don't know why they just mentioned that. Like, oh, you, you can't say no after you pass. It is expected to be from in process from October 2023 to July 2024. Oh, so that's interesting. So the first episode is broadcasted April 7, uh, 18th. 2024 but it's through July of 2024 and lastly it says if you have any questions please give inquiries to us via email sure sure and then this was August 5th okay and then the next day August 6th they send another email and basically it says new like the title is pretty much the same except it's new and then they also say attached file. The last time they actually did not attach any files just to let you know and they actually included the venue of the audition. So the one that I actually applied to is Toronto, Ontario because I thought the second round would be a little bit later like after September and I was planning on being in Toronto after September. I was not there in mid-August unfortunately so I couldn't make it to the audition. That is exactly why. Um, so that's actually why I responded to this email just like trying again like trying to contact them because I didn't receive a response last time and at that point it was only a day ago so I was like okay that's normal so I said thank you for this email although I'm based in Canada I'm currently staying in Korea for the next two weeks would an audition in Korea be possible for the second audition now this is easier for them they are literally based in Korea and I'm sure they're going to have um, offline auditions in Korea as well for Island too so I was asking them but they left me on deliver again and everything else was pretty much the same except they added the venue this time around and also some of the uh 
contents in the email were a different color, like it was in red instead of black, but pretty much everything else was the same. And they also added two attachments this time. This one is called the confidentiality agreement. And basically we were supposed to sign it and submit it, but I didn't sign it nor submit it. So I'm not agreeing to this. You know what I mean? I really don't want to get sued. That would not be good. But I didn't sign it, right? Any, any like lawyers in the comments? Or anyone that knows about basic laws, help me out, bro. Okay, another thing is the consent to the collection and use of personal information for participation in the Island 2 audition. Okay, so they basically just have like a normal form, which is about the applicant and also the applicant's parents. And you have to sign it and hand it in during the day of the audition is what they said in the email. And then on August 9th, so that was what, four days after the first audition was sent? They sent another email they made a couple of ad adjustments. So it was the exact same email, except it was a reminder. And this time they said 11 a.m., which makes a lot more sense because what kind of audition is going on at 11 p.m.? So they uh, changed that, but the address was the same and all of the information that was attached in the email was the same. All of the forms were the same as well. So that is pretty much it. That is what I got from this. I just kind of wanted to show you guys what happens if you pass an audition. What's the feeling like? Well, I felt scammed because they didn't reply back to my email. And, you know, I've done other auditions in the past. I may or may not have passed other auditions. But, you know, they all reply back to you. And especially if it's a survival show where you are on the clock. You know what I mean? Like, you got to get things rolling. I expect better better of them and I was a little bit disappointed but that is pretty much everything that was about the me passing the second round it's it's really not that big of a deal especially because I didn't go to the audition but I could not I was in Korea at that time and the audition was held in Toronto so maybe I should have applied as a Korean and living in Korea but that would be a lie at the same time so I don't know what I would have done I honestly just auditioned this for fun because I'm not trying to become a k-pop idol I am a university student here in Toronto, um, but yeah, for more audition t tutorials, for more audition information videos, uh, please feel free to stick around on my channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.